not forgetting this is the Raya uh, month and we celebrate Hari Raya for one month. Okay, although it was just last uh, week that we started to have uh, first second day of Raya, but to all Muslim friends, coaches, we would like to wish you Salamat Hari Raya Idul Fitri Ma'af Zari Batin. Okay, Salam Idul Fitri and welcome. And this is also a celebration for all of us in Malaysia, uh, not just for our Muslim brothers and sisters. So with this, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, welcome to ICW 2021. And I would like to now unshare my screen and I would like to invite our president, uh, Grace Lee, to address us this morning. So over to you, Grace. Thanks, Kim. Thanks for the introduction and take us through on the and make us in a good structure now. Thanks, Tim. And thank, uh, thank you everybody for joining us uh, this morning, celebrating the power and impact of coaching. For some of you the, in the audience today, this may not be the first time you're joining ICW. Over the years, with your participation, ICW has grown exponentially to become a worldwide event. So this is a week to showcase the impact and value of coaching. Thank you for this opportunity to bring coaching to the awareness of potential needs that we may not have been away or discovered yet. So um, for um, audience who are new to us today, maybe I'll just take you through a quick introduction of about um, ICF, who we are. So ICF is the largest global um, member network for professional coaches. We are um, professionally trained and credentialed coaches. ICF has presence in 140 countries and all members must have a foundational level of coaching specific training. So members, uh, like I said, we are not only credentialed, but we also uphold the ICF code of ethics um, to the highest level. That's who we are. And what do we do as ICF? First of all, ICF is the pioneer to the global standard of professional coaching. And secondly, uh, is an independent party to credential and certified coaches. And professional coaching and development networking is uh, another key product that is provided by ICF globally. Last but not least, uh, as ICF coaches, we have access um, to a lot of research and you know um, information um, studies worldwide. And when you uh, get uh, connected with ICF coaches, you actually have uh, access to the whole um, worldwide um, credential coaches. And in Malaysia, um, we are part of the organization, uh, part of the global organization. We exist as a local chapter for ICF in Malaysia. You see the number 2002 because um, ICF Malaysia was founded in 2002 and we operate as a non-profit organization. And you see all this work that has been to put together, the seminars, the webinars and all the events are all run by volunteers including all of us on board are all volunteers because we are a non-for-profit organization and we follow the highest standard of ethical guidelines. As of today, we have about 158 coaches, um, members as coaches. And in Malaysia, um, other than running um, educational series, we also partner with organizations. Like in the past um, few years, we have uh, partnered with many non-profit organizations and also um, Teach for Malaysia. Malaysia Youth Organization, uh, MBM, um, Majlis Belia Malaysia, and also the Entrepreneurs Organization to expand our reach and also to create coaching awareness in Malaysia. So that's what we do in Malaysia. Get connected with us, um, join us in the website and get, get to know us more. All right. So next, um, without uh, this person, you will not, all of us will not be here today because uh, Sok Leng is um, our tenured member. She has been a member for many years. And when we are looking for volunteers and say who wants to share an event called ICW, it's an annual event. And she put up her hand and say, yeah, let me try this. And then she took it on with her excellent leadership. And after um, two months, this is where we are today. So I would like you to um, welcome uh, Sok Leng to say a few words to us. So, Ling, over to you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Right. So, thank you, Grace, and good morning to everyone. Um, I actually feel quite relieved this. So, Ling, we cannot hear you now. Yeah, I'm not sure why my computer keeps muting me. 
Anyway, good morning to everyone. And um, what we started out uh, two months ago with a vision when five of us huddled together in a team meeting has today uh, become a culmination of uh, activities and speaker sessions come experience coaching to celebrate International Coaching Week. So I'm very happy that uh, there is so much support for this week's events. And um, what is International Coaching Week? For short, we call it ICW. It was launched 22 years ago in 1999 to celebrate the power of and impact of professional coaching. Our theme for this year is Define Challenging Times, a very apt description on the actions that we have to take individually to overcome the effects of the pandemic in our respective lives. So with this in mind, we thought about what would be appropriate to have for to celebrate ICW for this year. We thought about organizations and employees and the coping mechanism that they have to go through because change is constant and certain and communication is key. And coaching has been proven to be a powerful and impactful process to maximize the potential of people. And organizations with a coaching culture tend to have a high quality conversations which improves their communication, impacting meaningful changes in their employees as well as a better engagement workforce to navigate through the adversity, which is very much needed during these times. So, and we came up with an overview of our events and we had three tracks. So we have got the leadership track to, take, to address the leaders in organizations. And we also have got the specialty track where you know, there will be pockets of people in the organization like the HR groups, the change transformation groups, as well as the coaches who are involved in the organizations. We have got specific speakers to speak on their relevant topics, as well as not forgetting the communities, the leaders in our communities who are passionate in terms of giving back to society and making a difference in terms of the mission that they want to impact in the communities. So that was how we came out with the events. If you're seeing this for the first time and you've got time this week, please, I encourage you to register for all the different programs that we have lined up for you. And lastly, I would like to say a very special thank you to the ICW Events Committee who have been together for the past two months, the speakers, the moderators, the behind the scenes supporters, the technical crews, the volunteer coaches who have come forward uh, to support this effort during the week and all the participants that have signed up for the week. I thank you so much. And uh, right. without which, this week would not have been possible. And um, with this, I would like to hand back this uh, session, today's program, to Timothy, who is the moderator for the day, to kickstart the first session to launch our International Coaching Week of 2021. So Timothy, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Grace and also Sokling for your message. And uh, can I just share my screen now? Yes. Thank you. Right, let's get to the exciting event for today. Uh, if you notice the agenda for today, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just into the room, you've just joined us because we are, we are having people streaming in from time to time. Uh, we got more than 200 over registration today but we can see that the numbers are coming in so if you're in here for the first time could you put on a chat box where you're coming from so at least we know where you're from and we can connect with you okay uh, i see people coming from jakarta from italy and a few other from different countries welcome uh, good morning good afternoon good evening uh, from wherever you are today right the agenda for today there are two very important sessions first if you can notice there are two yellow uh, box that i've highlighted First is the speaker session, which we have got Peter Barr with us, and then followed by a coaching experience session for 45 minutes after our, our break session. 
So uh, to move on with this, I would like to now introduce to you Peter Ba, uh, who is a master certified coach and to give you a little bit of his background of uh, who Peter is. And I think this is going to be exciting because Peter is not new to the world of coaching. He's the founder of Ingenious Coaching back in year 2000, a visionary for Ingenious Institute in 2017. So he started a, a new setup called the Ingenious Institute, which I'm going to leave it to Peter to share later. Uh, a professional executive and business coach, a facilitator and also a speaker for the last 21 years. And he is the master certified coach with International Coaching Federation since 2007. That makes him to be the 2-3% to MCCs in the world. So a successful career that he has been in the corporate world, in the corporate life, in the corporate arena as CEO and CFO of national and international NFPs. Uh, likewise, he was a professional executive roles in the mining and resources sector before he came on board to be a full-time and in a professional level of uh, coaching and also facilitator and speaker. Uh, he was in the Global Board of ICF uh, back in 2013 to 2016 and also Global Treasurer uh, for two years in ICF Global. Uh, not forgetting that he's also an author. He wrote a book and the book is called Born Genius, Your Journey Back to the Source of True Success. And this is found and published in two languages, which is in English and Mandarin. And likewise, he also contributes uh, into two other coaching books uh, as a contributor in some of the chapters of those books. And not forgetting that uh, Peter is a creator of the Deep Shift platform and also the iOS app for Simple Habits Every Day. So I'm going to leave for Peter to share a little bit about that later. Uh, his current focus is in the Ingenious Institute, which is an incubator and creator of our online and soon to be AI based human development programs. And their first program is going to be launched by end of this year, by most probably 2021, later part of this year. Above all this, Peter is the father of Josie, Trinity and Zender, and a keen trial and long distance runner. Now, some of you can, can re, uh, res, uh, relate to that. A passionate uh, tennis player and a recent student of a didgeridoo. Now, well, most of us will ask you, what's a didgeridoo? So I, I, I had this picture and uh, maybe Peter later will show you what uh, a, a didgeridoo looks like uh, in life. So with this, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to pass this floor over to Peter and over to you, Peter. Thank you for sharing, and it's an honor to have you with us today. Timothy, thank you very, very much. I hope um, I can live up to at least one tenth of what you just shared about me. It's um, been a beautiful journey in coaching, and those who you are in it understand that it comes with so much richness. So, thank you for uh, for talking about my, my my world and and what it is. I'm very proud of where where it has come from, where I am now. So, thank you very much for that. Um, I do, Timothy just shared the end one was a didgeridoo, so I'm not going to play it for you, but I can tell you this is what one really looks like. It's very long. It has a wooden end there, which come, the wind comes out of, and that's where you put your mouth. So that's my didgeridoo. I told uh, the committee I will play it later for a sum of $10,000. So if anybody on the chat room wishes to donate $10,000, in other words, what I'm saying is I'm not very good and I prefer not to do it. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Timothy. Um, I'm going to share my screen too, um, which is a my PowerPoint presentation for today. I'll try and keep PowerPoint relatively small and relevant to only what we're doing. But uh, committee, thank you. Um, and uh, congratulations on, on your week for Coach Week. It's an honor to be here and to share with all of you. I love this conference title. <laughs> defying challenging times. And these are extremely challenging times um, and great coaching and leadership is needed more than ever. Uh, people, societies, countries in the world are really hurt, hurting and suffering. And coaching, whether you own it yet or not, is where part of the healing. So I, I commend everyone in the room as a coach or a leader that we're part of their healing. And it's time that we, if we haven't already to stand up and and honor that we can heal uh, the suffering and pain that's going on in, in our planet right now. When we do sign up to become coaches and leaders, we're signing up to serve and inspire. That's the topic of my conversation today, which is inspiring change in challenging times. It's a huge responsibility. It's a massive responsibility at the best of times, let alone where we are now. Um, and it's always about inspiring change. Uh, one of the presenters just before, I'm not sure who it was, said that change is the constant. It certainly is. It's, it's what's going on around us in every moment. And that constant 
has just been ramped up. It's like it's it's on steroids. Uh, one of the recent statistics I read said that um, there's between two and five years of IT development in the first two months. Uh, they achieve more in two months than in five years in some of this platform, for example, to be where we are sitting today. Um, we've never, never, ever cured a COVID virus ever and had a inoculation or, or, or injection for it ever in the history of humankind. We have one today. These changes that are going on are creating incredible possibilities for humanity. And some of us are being exposed, um, exposed as um, scared, um, uncertain, all the things that happen when, when change occurs. So as coaches, it's our role um, and as leaders as well, it's our role to not just uh, be part of the change, but be a model of the change. Um, and that, that makes us very responsible human beings. Um, today, it's my hope to provide you with a small torch, a very small torch to help you see through some of the dark of the, the period coming up. Um, I wish I could provide you with a, a lighthouse, um, a beacon that will see you through every journey you're going through. But um, unfortunately, uh, I, I don't think anyone has that cure yet. Uh, but what I can say to you is that somewhere deep inside you is your own lighthouse, your own beacon. And hopefully if we can support you to open that a little bit further to light your way, then I think we've done a good job today. Uh, today's work I'm doing with you is um, based on quite extensive research I've done uh, off the back of others. Um, a lot of reflection time myself in regarding what is change, what is transformation and how that overlaps with inspiration. Um, we, as coaches, and particularly the ICF coaches, one of our jobs also is to entwine everything back into a coaching framework. So there will be a piece of work I'm going to ask you to do at the end of the session. I'm going to ask you, participants as leaders, uh, experienced coaches, new coaches, people thinking of becoming a coach, to undertake a small exercise that represents real, live coaching now with every one of us. So thank you. Um, I hope we are together being inspired. Um, please don't look at me for inspiration. I promise I will let you down. I'm Pete doing my best um, and together we will create inspiration. And the first thing I'm going to ask you to bravely do, which is something we always do in conferences, is stepping out into somewhere that's a little bit brave, is I'm going to ask every one of you, and I know whether you are in a room, an office, um, a lounge room, a dining room, wherever you're sharing this experience, I'm going to ask you and invite you to be really brave for the next few minutes. Now, just as I move my slideshow on, um, because right now, oh, sorry, we always, we already had the, the congratulations on Eid that everybody's sharing. So, Selamat Hari Raya to everybody who's uh, celebrating that big week with family and friends. I really hope that this time together in, um, in, in recovery from Ramadan is one where you all celebrate and enjoy each other's companies. Um, our world is one where um, I, I imagine most of you might know what's on the screen there. We're probably old enough. Can anybody um, share with me in the chat room what, what they, they might think this thing is? Um, um, I'm looking at the chat room now. Thank you very much. So in, in our terms over here, we call it a boom box or a, a ghetto blaster, something that's up extremely loud, generally held on somebody's shoulder. Um, so I'm going to ask that we acknowledge that right now in the room, everybody has volume, whether it's real volume around you, whether it's the volume of your business, the volume of your family, the volume of the problems you're, you're, you're working with as we heal through this time. I'm going to ask you um, and invite you to turn the volume down for a minute. Take the volume switch in whatever's going on in your brain and choose to be here, present in the room in a way that allows you to quieten yourself. And the invitation I share with you is to all of you take a seat lay back sit back in your seat to feel your body your arms your legs in the chair you're in and relax them whatever's tight in your body just allow it to relax loosen the hands the jaw and wherever else is 
causing you tightness. And then focus on your breathing as you choose consciously to slow it down a little bit and take two very slow and deliberate breaths. There are over 200 people in this room right now, coaches, leaders, business executives. Some you may know, no, some you may not, at least yet anyway. I ask you to close your eyes and imagine we're all in the same room, maybe a big conference room that holds hundreds of all the special things that make that space safe, exciting, maybe even comfortable for you. A conference room that you enjoy the company of those around you. For me, that space would include music, gentle lighting, and the hub and excitement of so many like souls in one place, all there to connect learn, grow, and make a difference. Now, keeping your eyes closed, look around that room. Imagine looking around that room. Feel the energy. Sense the anticipation and, and smile. Smile at as many people as you can as they smile back at you. Have a sense of knowing, feeling a part of, belonging, you with colleagues, like souls, friends, coaching family, and you're all on a journey to transform and inspire. Feel it in your being. See it in others that, as they connect and care. Smell the possibilities. Know you are right where you need to be, to be the best version of you, contributing and making a difference, being on purpose. Now, as you take a final full and slow deep breath, gently begin to open your eyes. And as you do, realize that those souls in that room are all here today, connected on the same journey as you are. Feel their energy, smile deeply and with love to your camera now. Smile, smile at your computer. It says, as counterintuitive says, smile at your camera, knowing that we are here together by the sound of it, from all over the world and in a time when it is needed more than ever. Please take this energy to the rest of your conference, remembering that we're all in a room, all sharing, all scared, all seeking an answer of some sort. And it's in these places that we can really make a difference and inspire. So why are we here today? Well, my topic is about inspiring change um, and we and we talk about it from a leadership sense this is a leadership stream of the conference so what leadership is needed today um, i could have a, we could have a conversation just about that and, and the continual need to understand what type of leadership is needed what is inspiration and how to use it to manage change inspiration is that which we bring from inside to outside what does an inspiring leader look like Hmm, are you one? Are you looking at one? Do you want to be one? How can these challenging times be the inspiration to catalyze change? These inspiring times, these challenging times have created so much change already. Um, and I'm sure some of you have felt them not in a very positive way. But think of it is what change do you want to see in the world? We're going to talk that through. And what can I do right now to create the change needed? Not tomorrow, not next week, but in this day, what can I do right now in my responsibility to make change? I believe about 70% of the participants, that's about 140 people are coaches or wanting to be coaches and 40 to 60 people are business leaders in organizations, uh, large and small. Um, what can you do right now to create the change needed in your lives and your businesses? That's a question we're going to ponder. So on your screen now is, is something I bring up with every leader I work with. I say to them, do you know that most people in your executive team or your leadership team or those below you could do your job? 
90% of them could do your job. So 90% of your job is not that more difficult than the previous job you had. It's the 10% of the job. It's the 10% of the time that you have to turn up and make the tough decisions, confront the difficult situations, make the calls that no one else would want to, when everyone else is saying, thank God it's them that's doing this. That's where our real learning as coaches and leaders is. We don't learn in the 90%, we learn in the 10%. I love this quote from, I'll just put it on screen, sorry, just one second. I, lo I love this quote from Martin Luther King. The ultimate measure of a man or woman is not where the, he or she stands in moments of comfort, but where he or she stands at times of challenge and controversy. If today in our world is not a time of challenge and controversy, I don't know what is. Not even what's happening, but what could happen. Um, not wanting to paint the negative, there's lots of positives I want to bring out in that too. But what's the measure of you? Are you someone who can stand up in the 10% as a leader? Someone who can stand up in the 10% as a coach to ask the client the toughest questions, to make the toughest decisions about your business. That's the measure of a leader. I look at it like good chocolate cake. And I'm imagining most of you might enjoy chocolate cake with Eid being on at the moment. Um, I'm imagining that it's possible that you could be enjoying a heck of a lot of really good things. And leadership can't just be one flavour. It can't just be something that turns up and have chocolate cake again and again and again and not being able to change and be agile. As much as the cake might taste good, it, the cake does not necessarily serve to give us the outcomes we need. So what leadership is needed if it's not one size fits all, one chocolate cake? Um, by the way, I, I want you to imagine what's your favourite cake in this moment. I personally like baked cheesecake. Um, imagine what sort of cake you like. Some of it might be the chocolate cake. And think, what sort of flavour do I like that I always go to? What style of leadership and coaching do I always go to because it's my favourite flavour? Hmm. Sit with that for a moment. What flavour do you go to? So there's many theories on leadership. There's command and control, which is an old theory. We won't, we won't go through and explain them, but these are all theories that have come through history. Authentic leadership is a big one coming through right now. Servant leadership is one that came through about 10 years ago and asks us to be servants of our staff rather than the other way around. Level five leadership, it's, it's the strong holding on to and strength of the purpose and the vision of the organisation while being humble in the same moment. It's transformational leadership. It's situational leadership. It's resilient leadership. You'll hear the terms everywhere. What leadership is needed today? My take on it is, Maybe some of that, maybe something else, but maybe it's so individual and authentic that it's up to you to be the best leader you can to inspire others. Because right now, the tide is low and the rocks are being exposed. When the tide is high and the water's flat, it's easy for coaches and leaders. But when the rocks are exposed, the tide is rushing out and the rips and the waves are coming in, what strength of leadership do you have to battle through and to work through that, to be the model for what others want, what others need? I go as far as to say my 10% before is now, I call it the COVID leadership 30%. Not only as a coach and a leader do you have to be great in 10% of the time, you have to be greater in 30% to 50% of the time more likely. And that is tiring and exhausting. So if you're a leader or coach who feels, let's just say not inadequate, but unable in times to feel like you're capable like all of us do, now is a tougher time than ever. So please, I'm going to give you something that might help based on the research I've done. But first I'm going to show you what I quote. <laughs> the quote that I, I got from was from a global hotel chain. Um, I believe it might have been Hilton that said the COVID crisis is greater than the combination of 9-11 and the GFC. So we are going through probably in our lifetimes the biggest challenge that has ever been faced by our planet. 
30% of the time as a leader, you will be in crisis spaces, 70% less. And rather than chocolate cake, I think we're going to need a multi-layered, multi-filled, multitude of ways of eating the leadership and coaching um, journey that we go on. So I call this the layers of the L30 COVID cake. There's seven layers to this cake. There are seven characteristics I'm going to bring up to you, all based on research from McKinsey's, Deloitte's, KPMG, and other reputable sources. These are the traits of leaders in COVID that create inspiration and possibility. The first layer, the base layer, a leader must be trustworthy more than ever trustworthy. Uncertainty creates challenges in people that leads to uh, situations of less than high performance, um, sickness, illness. Um, so provide a place where you can be trusted. Trusted doesn't mean always providing good news. Trusted means being able to tell the truth about what is real for the organization or your client as a coach, what you're noticing. Layer number two, the orange layer, empathy. I know in coaching and, and, lot, and leadership in life, we think empathy is important. Right now, everybody is suffering and we go into our own little worlds in our own suffering. We need to be in the shoes of others more in the 30% than ever before. Layer three, optimism. I find that this is one of the hardest things for people to be when around them, everything is crashing. But leaders and coaches, it's your job to focus on the vision of the organization or the outcomes of the coach of the client more than ever. To focus on them in a way that serves them to stay out of the depth of their pain, to point to what's positive, to be optimistic about the organization's success and to be optimistic about the individual's possibilities. Stay optimistic leaders. Layer number four, ethical. In times of challenge and people go into their fear base, call it their amygdala, which is the part of the brain that is fear, which is fight or flight. When we go into our amygdala fight or flight, we can as coaches or leaders be less than, more, less than ethical than we'd like to be. And as we know, the ICF has its ethical guidelines, ethical principles. And this is the time to really make sure we focus on staying ethical, staying true to what really does provide a platform for the success long-term of our business. Not only ethical, but social. Having a social conscious, not ethically just within, but without the, without the organization, looking to situations where you can contribute to that outside of your realm where we tend to shrink when things get difficult. It's time to show some expansion ethically and socially and morally. Layer five, wellness focused. As leaders and coaches, we need to first focus on our own wellness and well-being, focus on our own health and well-being to be there for others. If we're burning the candle at both ends, or if we're overstressed and distressed in life's challenges, we're no good for anybody. Take the oxygen from your own mask first. Please be strong in the sense of being well for everybody. Then ensure your organization and your people are well. Wellness programs, wellness initiatives, things that are simple and easy to do when people are sitting at home. I could talk about this one all day. I have wellness qualifications. But please, as a leader, consider wellness as one of the top seven things to focus on in your organization. Topic number six, layer number six, the purple layer, adaptability. Adaptability is in times where things are difficult, we focus on the short term. We become very myopic. We come very much about the now. We have to, in the now, be adaptable to change. Be more willing to make mistakes as an organization or as a coach than you ever be, been before. Perfectionism does not work right now. Great leaders are making mistakes out there because they have to, because the future is uncertain. Be adaptable, be flexible, be willing to make mistakes. Nobody is going to die from you making a mistake. 
okay? The, the biggest mistake you can make is doing nothing and changing nothing in your organizational leadership styles. Our last layer, be authentic. I know it ties in with a lot of the other words, but authenticity is about being vulnerable as well. Let people know that you're hurting too. Let people know that it's not easy for you. Let people know that it's a journey we're all on together, that there are days that you have to do your best to get out of bed because that's how they're feeling. Be in their worlds. Let them know that you are like they are feeling it. And that's not weakness. Vulnerability does not equal weakness. Vulnerability is a new strength. It's a strength that if you bring well to an organisation, brings people together, not separates them. That's my COVID L30 cake. And although those words there might be those that you know in, in many contexts, this is from the best research from thousands of organisations in the world. This is what the best leaders are doing. We're going to be doing exercise shortly to make sure we're actually living true to it. I call it inspirational leadership. So what is inspiration or inspirational leadership? It's the capacity of a leader to access the untapped energy. That's it. Your job is to, to get the untapped energy inside yourself and others to move forward and towards an outcome of the organization or your client. Okay, it's how do I tap the energy out of them? Or help them to tap into their own energy. Now that 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 quote is not by Einstein, Gandhi, Buddha, uh, Bill Gates. That's just boring me. Sorry about that. I, I can't I can't put that on anybody else and say it's famous and you've got to tattoo it on your arm. It's just something that I believe in. Getting into the untapped energy of people. So how how do we do that as coaches and leaders? Well, first and foremost, be the same. It's, it's the same as it's the same as always. You've still got to be the leaders, the coaches, but better, more often, more rigorously. Okay. Become the master of the L30. We're going to talk about how to do that in a minute. Reflect on your own areas of fear and challenge. They're the things that are going to stop you asking the harder question, delivering the tougher conversation. What are those? Be a reflective leader. Own the truth of what is your uh, weak areas as a leader or a coach and seek help from them. Ask great questions. And that's going to be today's, today's piece of work. We're going to ask some great questions around the L30 uh, that support us to be better in our day-to-day -day experience so we can be the inspiration needed to create change through this very difficult time. Be willing to make mistakes. Uh, this work might be a new thing for all of you. It might not be. But if it is, be willing to try it. We uh, don't become professionals at coaches, as coaching or leadership the first time we try. It's trial and error. So make mistakes and start over again. If we didn't and gave up too early, we'd never enjoy the things that we're great at today. So it's time for everybody to experience a little bit of coaching. There's our seven layers of the C30 cake. Trustworthiness, empathy, optimism, being ethical, wellness, adaptable, and authentic and vulnerable. Here's the work we're going to do. Not eat the cake. We're going to go through five questions. And we're going to answer them in a coaching con conversation with ourselves. I compel you to write the question down and to answer for yourself. No one will know your answers. It's a place to be genuinely honest, truthful, vulnerable, and empathetic towards yourself. If you're going to be truly vulnerable, please start with self. First question, where in leading or coaching do I need to be more one of the seven things? Think of the trait in the seven things there that is your weak spot. Am I trustworthy? Do I need to be more trustworthy? Am I showing enough empathy for myself, for my clients, for my, for my employees? Am I being optimistic enough? Am I focused too much on the short term? I need to be more optimistic. Pick one of the traits and then ask yourself the question, where specifically do I need to be that person more? Notice the language I used is be. Be more, not do more, have more, create more, but, but to be the embodiment. Where 
do I need to be more? I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to reflect on that. Where do I need to be more in my leading or coaching? This is Real Coaching Live, everybody. Where in leading or coaching do I need to be more? I'm going to move to question number two. This might be something you can take to the coaching session with your coach after we have this session because it could be a place that really hits a chord for you. Question number two, what outcome do I desire from being more adaptable, ethical, optimistic? Think about what outcome do I really desire? Not just I have to do it, what's the outcome? What's the goal? Every coaching conversation has to be about what outcome are we after? What outcome do I desire from being more empathetic? Please write at least one or two things. And I would love so much if time permitted to share some of this, but given it's the type of conversation we're having, uh, we might be stuck with just uh, um, talking about it and, and reflecting with ourselves and with our coach after this session. Question number three, what mindset, belief or emotion do I need to shift to make this possible? What's getting in the way? Is it fear? Is it a fear of not being enough, not good enough? Is it anger? Is it a belief that you don't deserve? Is it that you're too busy? that uh, um, you're too overwhelmed? What is the belief or mindset that is keeping you stuck from moving towards the outcome, from applying one of your seven COVID L30 layers of the cake? What mindset, belief or emotion do I need to shift? Take a few seconds to write, write it down. Question number four, what mindset, belief or emotion will support me to achieve my outcome? This can be where you challenge the one around the fear you have of not being enough and saying, actually, I am enough. I have all the resources I need right now to be successful. And yes, I am busy, but the mindset would be to possibly prioritize my work better because I really need to focus on my staff's wellness. They're feeling exhausted and worn out from working at home and they're lost. I need to spend more time with them. So I think what mindset, belief or emotion might support you to be the better version of you, to be the inspirational leader and inspirational coach that's required in this very, very difficult time we're going through. And finally, and this is coaching in a very gritty way, answering this question, what specific action can I commit to taking from this conversation with yourself to move towards this outcome? Make a commitment. I'm going to ring my staff, every one of them, every day for the next week. I'm going to install a yoga program um, online for my staff to partake in. Um, I'm going to share a story with my staff about the challenges I've had as a coach or a leader. What specific action 
can you commit to taking to move towards the outcome you so dearly want? Write down the action and write down by when will you take that action? Be specific. I will do this by Friday at five o'clock. I will do this after this session is complete. Make a commitment. So as I go through the questions to finalize them, where in leading or coaching do I need to be more one of the L30 um, layers? What outcome do I desire? Make sure it's something that's specific that you can really measure. What belief or emotion might you need to shift to get out of the way of you being able to, so you can achieve the outcome? And what powerful supportive mindset or belief would you like to bring into the conversation, into your head that will support you to achieve this outcome? And then lastly, go and do it. That's for those of you who are experienced coaches, that in one, one in five questions is the essence of how we run through some high level coaching. If those of you have never experienced coaching, this could be a little framework you take and ask questions around anytime you wish. So I hope today, as we've turned the volume down so that we can hear our own thoughts, feel our own feelings, that we can genuinely sense that we can be inspirational leaders inspirational coaches in one of the most challenging times that I think we've ever experienced in history. I, for one, am going to stand up with my hand up and say, I'm giving it my best shot and being vulnerable. That doesn't mean it's great every day. Uh, we all have challenges and believe me, no one's immune, but I'm grateful to be hanging around with a group of like-minded people today who understand that and want to be part of the solution and wish to inspire others. So I commend you on that. And lastly, I just want to say thank you so much because the icing on the L30 cake is always gratitude. As a leader and a coach, make sure your icing is always gratitude because gratitude brings it all together. So thank you. I know there's a lot of questions and I know there's a lot of sharing to be had. So I'm happy to uh, leave the session and take any questions that... Um, that will serve uh, the outcomes that um, you'd like to get from today. So to uh, Timothy, uh, William, thank you for that. And I hand it back over to you. Thank you, Peter, great stuff. Thank you for enlightening us in this area of a challenging time and how to be an inspirational leader in the midst of all these situations that we are in. Uh, we see a lot of questions coming through the chat box and I just want to remind all participants, all attendees, our guests and also coaches, if you have a question, please put a queue in front of your questions before you type in, so at least we know this is a question. Okay, the first question we have, uh, Peter, for you is uh, by uh, Coach Moha that's asking, why do you name it COVID L30? Uh, L30 is, uh, L is for leadership. So it's the leadership 30%. It's the place where leaders need to spend more of their time. It's an uncomfortable space. It's, it's the place we probably avoid as leaders and we try to tend to go back to where we're safe and comfortable, whether that's a technical area into management rather than leading and inspiring. Okay. Yeah, great. Thanks. Hope that answers uh, clearly. Uh, next question is from Bala Krishnan, uh, and his question is: the better leadership style is authentic leadership. Uh, can be arguably, but weighing all pros and cons, is authentic leadership way forward as ethical challenges are keeping coming in defeating challenge uh, leadership. We don't want Enron four, Enron one, Enron two is a wreck scandal. So one MDB is Enron three. Your feedback, please. <laughs> I think he's referring to the, the, the cases of no, being authentic and being, being uh, in the level of integrity, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And look, if you, if you go through the, uh, the, the seven layers I just gave you, you know, trustworthiness, you know, ethical, um, authentic, vulnerable, you know, they're the focuses. And, and to ask questions of yourself, be very, very introspective and ask, where do I fall short in that space? And what can I do to step, step up? Because that is truly inspirational leadership. And it does come, I, lo I love your term, authentic leadership. It's being you in the moment. Um, and sometimes parts of us are not always wonderful and parts of us are scared and they might take an easy path. 
but I really commend each of you in the moment where you're taking the easy road to really take a breath and stop and ask, is that the best path? Okay, thank you. Next question we got from uh, Lee King. Coach Lee King asks, uh, is Q2, question two related to question one? And uh, question two, what outcome do I desire from being more empathetic? Uh, if question one, my answer is empathetic, so uh, the blank in Q2 to choose is independent of Q1. Uh, it is, I'll give you an example. So if I say I choo I'm choosing to be more authentic, the question is by being more authentic, what outcome do I wish to achieve? It might be better connection with my people so that they're more um, inspired to um, be more productive and, and more uh, aligned with the outcomes of the organization. So authenticity, the seven layers are who you're being in service of what you want to achieve as an outcome. Okay. Great, thanks Peter. Next question is from Coach Shin Tan. Uh, resonating with Karine, uh, Karine, may I ask how much of vulnerability or authenticity is just right? Would it backfire on us if we expose our vulnerability too much? Uh, if we're exposing our vulnerability not as being a victim, okay? It's not poor me, this is terrible, this happened to me. That's victim language. Vulnerability language is sharing I have had this experience and it was uncomfortable. And I know that um, maybe you've had similar experiences. So it's around the way you language it in a way that doesn't make you the victim, okay? Um, emotion in vulnerability is fine as long as it's kept in a space where the language represents supporting what happened, not how you felt and, and how you became a victim to it. It is a fine line, believe me. And I think the other part to that question is it's situational. You really have to gauge the situation and be what we call in, in coaching going to a meta position, which is observing the conversation and seeing how deep you should go from an objective place. Great. CK Liu uh, has got a question here. Uh, where in the leading, do I need to be more optimistic, especially how the pandemic in Malaysia has been managed? Well, I know you're going through, um, I think your third major shutdown, am I correct? Yep. And uh, I feel very much for you because as a leader, this is where the L30 matters. You're probably more in that difficult time because more is expected of you. Uh, so I, I, I don't have a real answer because everybody has a different experience. All I can say from a coaching perspective is you are the model that everybody will want to observe because if you're showing, weakness is not the right word, but if you're showing that um, it's affecting the organization, if you're showing that um, it's, you won't get through as an organization, then that's the energy they will feel. Your job in optimism is to remember what is the organizational outcome that we are here to deliver? What is our vision and stay true to that as best as you can. That's organizational efficacy and, and um, governance. It's your job to look at always number one, what's the vision and where are we going in our purpose? You're the gatekeeper for that, no matter what wind is blowing at you, okay? And number two, because you're taking all of that experience, you've got to look after yourself. Please look after yourself. If you're finding that things creep into our lives like habits, addictions, and behaviors that aren't ideal, look after yourself. And that's the way to maximize your um, resilience through this very difficult time. Seek and seek help. You know, as a leader, if, if, if someone's asking me that question as a leader, I say, have you got a coach? Have you got someone uh, safe you can feel you can go to and, and, and share and, and, and download? Um, it, it's essential. I, I have a coach and I have a psychologist and I have friends. I talk to a lot of people and I'm meant to be, I'm a master coach. I'm meant to be okay. No, I'm not. I'm just Pete. We all need help and support in difficult times. 
Great. I, I like that. Uh, I think it's, it's, a, it's also a very timely uh, for coaches to call one another and just say, hey, how are you? How are you doing? Do you need to talk? Do you need to share? Uh, I think uh, a mentoring coach is, is very effective now. If you, if, even if you're not a mentor coach, I guess when you just call another coach just to get some sort of you know, support and help, I think that, that, that's great. Right. Uh, we got another question. Uh, this is from Coach Pam Morrissey. And the question is, as coach and leader, empathy is a key one to me. How to cultivate empathy? What I know empathy is or is not? Uh. Um, I think there's two questions there. Um, cultivating empathy first has to come from a very conscious, a very conscious being. You have to be present. In, in coaching terminology, it's coaching presence. If you're genuinely in the moment and you're genuinely listening, not to just the words that are coming out of the person's mouth, but the emotions and feelings, feeling behind the words, feeling into the experience, um, and practice it, feel into that, and then courageously, courageously being so present that the question will come. And if it doesn't, just be there. Half the time as coaches, I think our empathy has to be a great question. Our empathy is our presence. Our empathy is our gentleness. Our empathy is our ability to be there when no one else can just be with them and make them realize they're not judged. They're accepted for who they are. So cultivate that in every experience, in every conversation. It doesn't have to be a coaching conversation. And you will see the strength and resilience of, of empathy over time. Um, empathy is purely being in the other's shoes. It's what's it like for them right now. And um, for some people, it's easy to jump into that. For me, it's easy. For some people, it's almost impossible. If it's impossible, fake it till you make it pretend you're empathetic i'm sorry that sounds terrible but if you can't do it sit with them smile and shut up but be with them in that moment that's how it can grow for you by feeling them not having to fix them feel them don't fix them right i get it. Uh, I, I feel that, I feel that. Feel them and uh, don't fix them. I think that that's, that's a good quote for that. Uh, I, I guess what you shared and what you've just answered, Peter, is all apply for leaders, not just coaches, but uh, those of us are in the leadership position. We're talking about inspirational leadership and facing the challenges we have today. Uh, there's a question from Sarini Bujang here, and she asked this question. How do we go from an organization with broken trust to an organization with renewed trust? Uh, uh, as, as a business and executive coach, I... I think that's probably the number one thing I face when I'm brought into organizations. And that is that trust has been broken, which means culture has been affected badly and it's not a quick fix. Okay. My belief is the first step always is to acknowledge it because people don't generally acknowledge trust has been broken. I am the instigator of the broken trust. It's, own, it's being aware of and owning that trust is broken at the level where the trust was broken. And that's where the place of healing can begin. And I had a long session on business coaching. I would, I would go further into it and, and make sure that the organization as it stands today still believes in its vision and purpose and to remind it of why it exists whether that's still true for those that are the decision makers and the leaders and if that's foundation of rebuilding trust and refocusing on what matters then there's a good platform to begin with great thanks Peter. Uh, another very interesting question coming from me and the question is this what if the issue we face is our company leader okay then there's a <laughs> to it uh, we can change ourselves but we cannot change others uh, how do we adapt this to this kind of environment in order to move forward as a leader yeah yeah excellent excellent question which is faced by many middle level management and high level management people when the ceo or the managing director is the problem um, organizations bring me in probably from sometimes from the, the ceo level saying my organization has a problem we need to fix it i say it's probably you and then I shut up. 
<laughs> and generally, if they're not willing to own their contribution to the problem, then the problem won't change. So that just leaves you as a manager with choices. And um, choices are one, if it's really ethically, morally and values based misaligned with you, then leave. Um, don't stay and complain and make it, you know, the, day, the daily coffee room conversation. Stand, stand by what you stand for and, and leave. Two, if you choose to stay, have ways of reflecting on how can you influence um, the situation more than you currently are. So, so maybe learn some good influencing skills um, that have the ability to not just think I can control everything and make sure that I have to change it, it's not working, is to say, what conversations can I have that are supportive of the change? Um, and, and not conversations that are covert and behind the doors, but real conversations with real people about how can we as an organization collectively affect and influence um, the leader's business card. Um, I don't know, there's my solution for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks, Mira. We are mindful of time and we got one last question to go with and then we will move on. Okay, the last question is coming from Coach Kimberly Ko. Uh, regarding empathy, how to balance being that safe space for our client to share with us and to be that motivating coach asking them the tough questions? Mm. Well, I feel that there might be a confusion there that empathy is not necessarily safety. Um, um, and it's not, it's, um, it's being present with them. It's being genuinely feeling what's going on for them. Um, and in that moment, true empathy and, and true trust is having, is, is asking that question. Um, assuming that, not assuming, but believing in yourself that the question is, is a powerful question that needs asking. I, I always say to myself, and I might even say it out loud to my client, I'll say, I don't know why this question has come and, and I'm not sure how you're going to receive it, but it's here now and I feel compelled to ask you. So please um, receive the question from a place of a deep, deep love and, and, and concern for you because it's a question I think beggars asking. Um, and so I can pre-frame pre it sometimes and, and that, that allows the client in some cases to, to just receive it a bit more gently, even if it is a really tough question. Great. Thank you, Peter. We are really at the top of the hour and we really we really appreciate all the sharing and also the question that comes from our uh, participants today and our guests and our coaches. Uh, we'd like to move on uh, with one more thing for Peter, which is I think uh, we all should give him a big applause if you can